Hi, I'm Shantra P. Lewis, Director of Exhibitions and Programming here at the Caribbean Cultural Center African Diaspora Institute. I would like to formally invite you all to join us for the reception of our upcoming exhibition, Life After Death, a multimedia analysis of the persona that was, is, Fela Anakulapokuti. Fela Anakulapokuti, uh, the father of Afrobeat, has been very influential in the lives of many artists as well as the lives of many activists and other individuals in the African diaspora. seeks to pay tribute to one of the African diaspora's most influential living ancestors, as well as provide a visual critique of the complexity of his persona and his personality. One of the most exciting things about this exhibition is never before seen photography by Marilyn Nance. Marilyn, a New York native, was actually a 23-year-old young woman, artist and activist who traveled to Lagos, Nigeria during Festac to take part in the festivities and the cultural activism that was happening in Lagos, Nigeria. While there, she had the opportunity to meet Fela, photograph him at his home, and also photograph him at the shrine. She snapped photographs of him and Hakeem Madabuti, people like Sun Ra, and other individuals. So this is very exciting to have her included in the show. Now we're here with one of the artists from the Life After Death exhibition, Amanda Adams Louis who is also known as La Photographer. I won't even try to pronounce that with my Noana's accent. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about um, where you're from? First of all, I just want to say it's you know, very exciting to have you as a part of the show. I love your work. Thank you. Can you tell us a little bit about where you're from? Um, it's an honor and pleasure to be in the show. And I am of um, African American and Haitian descent. And I grew up in Eastern Europe, Western Europe, um, Southwest Africa, and Latin America. Cool, that's and diverse. I moved back to New York for uh, university. That's definitely a diaspora experience. <laughs> so, how did you get to Brooklyn? Um, I, I'm an alumni of Pratt, and I moved to Brooklyn um, to attend Pratt in '04. Okay, cool. And you're in school now, correct? Yes. Working on your MFA. Yes. Okay, My cool. MA. MA. Yeah. Right. Okay. In what? Um, in street dance culture, I'm using Africana studies and visual culture to examine the globalization of hip hop dance and other forms of street dance. So speaking of, um, some of your photos in the show are documenting just that yeah. particular culture. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, I, well, I began um, documenting, you could say, club dancers or hip hop or street dancers in 2005 um, when I walked into a party and I saw people dancing in a way that I've never seen before. And I was like, whoa, I live in all of these places and I've never seen people like dance like this in my life. And when you hear about the rich African American cultural tradition of dance or music, um, electronic forms of music like house and techno are most of the time excluded from them and not included within the canon of black music. And they are very much a part of it because they were both pioneered by African Americans in Chicago and Detroit, respectively. Right. Right. And that's kind of where my whole impetus to shoot club dancers came in. I was really drawn to the music at the atmosphere of the clubs. And then I saw the dancers. And so, um, how do you think uh, Fela has influenced this particular like subculture? Um, he's influenced the subculture because he he's a lot of people's entry to it. Mm -hmm. I find, and he also represents the kind of freedom of expression and freedom of life and desire, um, sexual freedom, even political freedom that a lot of people go into that a lot of people in these communities feel that they should have and are fighting for either through their art or through their music or through their work or just believe in. So I think, I mean, as a music figure, his music is amazing. And, uh, you know, the whole kind of, I wouldn't say, I don't want to call it Afro-romantic, but just looking and considering the kind of work that's coming out of Africa, um, musically or visually, has really inspired a group of people in Brooklyn, and I think there's a large connection between that. We're here again with another artist from the Life After That exhibit, um, one of my favorite people in the world, Akil Ka. Hi, Kim. How you doing? Good to be here. Mm. Excited to have you on the show again. You were just in the Wearing Thread exhibit and now you're in Life After Death. Yes, supposed to be excellent. The last one was excellent. It's as well. I think so. It's a challenge. <laughs> Tell me about your piece. Uh, the piece for the favorite show. Right? Yes. Um, the piece is called uh, A Cock for Allegra. Um, really, what I explore is the, the contradictions and the paradoxes of the person that is Um So, uh, if you see the painting, if you see the painting, um, you know, it's featured mostly in the, uh, 
tones of red, black, and white, which are the colors associated with the label. And, um, and then I have these, uh, you know, it's Peaches Fela holding up uh, what I call a crazy demon, which is like a three-headed rooster with the heads of Ronald Reagan, Margaret Thatcher, and, uh, and Ola Sanjo. And uh, he's, he's about to uh, sacrifice the cock. And instead of using the machete, he's using the, you know, his instrument, which is uh, his, his music, his trumpet. And then he said in this environment where, you know, there's this, uh, you know, all this conflict around, you know, his life is, you know, full of uh, instances of police brutality, uh, um, you know, just things, exploitation of people in Nigeria. Um, so I sort of expressed this with, like, you know, uh, military, images of militarism, uh, uh, multinational uh, corporations, I have the logos of oil companies that do work in Nigeria. Um, and then I have these like uh, uh, barbed wire, which intersects. Also, uh, going back to the idea of the language, so these intersections, you know, are constantly crossing Bela, behind Bela. This is really just, uh, you know, talking about, uh, you know, all the, the, well, the good things and the bad things, you know, try to, without judgment of what, or who Bela was, or what he represents. In, in the context of paralleling black liberation movements globally. So you know, it's not just sort of about fail as an individual, it's also about uh, you know, the, the method of thinking of the time, his time now, and, and how it relates you know, uh, you know, all over the world. This exhibition includes powerful and colorful pieces that have been created by various artists from around the African diaspora, representing Nigeria, Santo Domingo, the United States of America, New Orleans, Brooklyn, and other parts and cities around the world. Hopefully you can join us for the opening reception on Thursday, June 10th from 6 to 9 p.m. with music provided by DJ Lumumba, BK Revolution. If you would like to visit our gallery, you can stop by here at the Caribbean Cultural Center Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. with a suggested donation of $5. For more information or details, please visit our website at www.cccadi.org or give us a call at 212-307-7420, extension 3008. Peace.